This podcast, drum roll, we're going to talk about body shaming. Yes, I do body shame in this podcast. Also talk about success and failure stories when it comes to matchmaking and the current state of my life. Now, what I'm about to say, look, I don't care how you take it because I know we're in the age where people just love to get offended about every little bit, every little damn thing, right? Everyone's ready to pounce on it, ready to disagree. Um, quit celebrating, quit empowering morbidly obese. Do not confuse this for me accepting of curvy or slightly a lot more than just a lot above being skinny. I'm talking morbidly obese. Quit celebrating that. Maybe you can call it bullying all you want, but there's no other worse type of bullying than self abuse. All right. I'm going to tell you right now, if you're offended, work on your body. This ain't this has nothing to do with dating. This is this is the fact that I am tired tired of seeing these news clips of someone in their 30s, their late 20s, young 40s dying of a stroke, dying of COVID when they're young and they should be able to fight it off, but because they didn't take care of themselves now, dad is single, having to take care of three or four kids. Mom is single, having to take care of three or four kids. But since we want to deep dive into dating, because that's what I talk about, then let's talk about that. Some of you are going to counter a shot and say, oh, you're just, you know, so obnoxious. You're body shaming on this and that and whatnot. I got to repeat myself because some of you fools come at me all kind of offended. Quit celebrating morbidly obese. Quit celebrating being unhealthy. And if you say mind your own business, if we minded their own business, serial killers would keep killing. If we minded their own business, we would have people just want to continue to commit suicide and not implement uh, mental health centers or uh, free counseling for veterans or whatever. We sometimes do have to mind our business. Okay, if that's the case, we'd have people still dying outside of that military base. You know what I'm talking about. No names need to be said. Rest in peace, Vanessa. So, yes, I am going to mind my business because I'm tired of having some woman, and I say mainly woman. Okay, and yes, I know the guys do it too. Doesn't mean it's all finite, universal, or whatever. But I get a lot of female clients that want an in shape man, right? They, they come up to me and they're like, man, he needs to be tall, in shape. And you sitting around here with a BMI of over 50. No, 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 no. And if you get mad, use that fuel to work out to eat better. Quit with the emotional eating. Quit abusing your body because it's a way to medicate yourself. There's people that are addicted to food or they cure their sadness through food. They cure their happiness through food. When they're pissed off, they eat. When they're bored, they eat. Quit doing that. You're going to have back issues. You're not going to be able to sleep as well. You're not going to be able to perform in bed as well. You want to get mad at me? Get mad at me all you want. But in the end, it's you. You got to look at yourself in the mirror. And if you're together, if you're married, work out together. Facts don't have feelings. When you get on the scale, okay, you can't protest the scale. There's no safe space when you step on the scale. When you when you get your glucose checked and it's over 125 and you're looking at prediabetes, that doesn't lie, okay? 
can't protest that. You can't you can't do a GoFundMe account for that. You can't make a a you can't you can't go on the streets and have picket signs. Nope, you got to answer it to yourself. So that's where we're at right now. We got it to where I got it. I completely understand. We're in this whole movement of self acceptance, and people gotta accept you. But I'm not gonna accept high cholesterol. I'm not gonna accept high blood pressure. I'm not gonna accept me looking all crazy. But then here I am wanting a, a good looking woman who stays in shape. And guess what? It's not about just looking good for others. This is about your damn health. It's about keeping yourself healthy. Like bottom line, keep yourself healthy. So, again, you want to be mad at me all you want and be offended? At the end, if you hear my other voice, my other uh, podcast, I'm about to say my other voicemails because I'm, you know, sometimes I got to leave you on voicemails, clients, that is. If you hear my other podcast, it's all tough love. It's love. I say all this because I want you to get better. If you consider it body shaming, then shame yourself into not being like that. Do you want to die early? Do you want to be tired all the time? Do you want to be depressed? Do you want to be anxious because you're eating all this processed food that causes anxiety and depression? Or do you want to feel energetic? Do you want your libido going? Do you want to feel like you're making life improvements? Do you want to challenge yourself? Do you want to see the numbers on that scale tip in the way you want it to? Do you want to see your glucose go down? Do you want to challenge yourself to get lower blood pressure? Do you want to be more flexible? Do that. Okay? This is part of that whole holistic self-improvement that I, I advocate for you to do. So it's up to you. That's not on me. Let's get to work. What's going on, people? So um, if you didn't hear my, uh, my last Instagram live, I definitely discussed a change in my relationship status. Hint, hint. I'll let you go watch that. Hop into my IG, the dating doc. Check out my latest uh, Instagram live and you'll see towards the end. You'll get to hear it all as I did my um, my session live from Corpus Christi. Two hours from where I'm from, where I live, went out to the coast. And yes, I adhere to COVID-19 guidelines. Stayed away from people, but still was able to see people. So it was a good, it was good. As at the time of this recording, I am peeling. I'm looking like the little crocodile man, whatever his name is, off of a Suicide Squad. I'm, I'm, I'm scaling, I'm peeling all over. Um, but it was good, it was needed. And uh, we're back at it. Full-time work with the military side of house, teleworking, and as you know, doing the dating doc. So, uh, How's life? If you're if you're hearing this and you have any way to comment or you know what, shoot me a message at admin at the dating doc.com. Admin at the dating doc.com. Send me a message. Let me know how you're doing. How's life? I'm not going to have to upsell you on anything. Just let me hear from my fans and see how life is going. Uh, what else? What else is going on right now? So let's see. The SpaceX astronauts uh, landed back made it back safely beautiful thing uh the rock bought the xfl which is a defunct football league that was supposed to give the nfl some competition especially in the midst of all the political drama surrounding the nfl and the rock is a co-owner now of the xfl bought for 15 million dollars which is actually in the big scheme of things is pretty cheap for a football league so let's see what happens with that uh, what else is happening? Um, supposedly, the uh, Trump is looking at delaying the elections. I won't go there. I don't really like to talk about politics that much, to be honest, because it's super divisive. Speaking of divisive, we're still living in a in a very contentious time right now with the Black Lives Matter movement, um, and uh, and also obviously in the the COVID nineteen era. So, um, 
yeah, who knows? Maybe years from now, I'll listen to this and say, wow, we survived that, right? But yeah, let me know how you're doing. Listen in, keep tuning in to Dating Luck. So um, this podcast is more of a, um, almost to consolidate what's kind of happening in uh, internal to um, to Dating Doc. So I, a couple of podcasts ago, I talked about um, horror stories, you know, just some of the craziest clients, craziest situations. Um, I want to talk about some of the good ones, some, some success stories. And, you know, this podcast, it's one of those things where you can just relax, listen, Take what you want, maybe some of your fishing for advice, Um, but this is a good cathartic experience. You're able to get different angles from the dating industry. Um, So for those that don't know, um, I started out with a company called Synergy Dating, S-C-E-N-E-R-G-Y, Synergy Dating, hosted events and did matchmaking, started back in 2010. And... um, Everyone, everyone asked at the beginning, hey, what's your success rate? And I'm talking in the first couple months, right? So um, I said, hey, right now we just started. So don't really have much for you. What ended up happening is after a couple years, and I literally, literally mean a couple years, right after the two year mark, I started looking at collecting statistics of my events. And I noticed that for every eight people that attended, Two would walk each other out, exchange phone numbers, or, or and or connect. Now we started doing video speed dating. Fast forward here, we started doing video speed dating, and it's almost the same exact trend. Um, there's a lot of more. There's a lot more matching, but I'm getting a lot of feedback on people taking it further, going on little one-on-one FaceTime dates. Uh, meeting each other safely at a restaurant, coffee shop, all that COVID and stuff. And um, I'm like, cool, interesting, 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 because I was actually worried that it was going to be less because we live in the era of novelty, the Coolidge effect. If you want to Google that Coolidge effect, where after a while we just easily get bored um, of the same partner. It happens a lot in dating. That'd be a whole nother podcast. But um. So yeah, so that's the statistics on the event side of the house. For matchmaking, matchmaking we've had the first good, good feel good story that ended up really nasty was um, this, uh, I set up this really good looking uh, young 50s Colombian doctor. I mean, he was good looking, kept himself in shape, looked way younger than his age introduced him to a Puerto Rican nurse and I thought man this was like cool this is a good match they both like salsa music uh, they both can talk about medical both have kids and uh, just a lot of good similarities um, and my intuition kicked in and I I really thought personality wise they would mesh well she was more of the sassy but kind and he was a little bit more the quieter but strong and it worked out well and um he every now and then he'd send me a little little message like hey things are going really well appreciate you appreciate the fact you introduced me to her I'm like cool awesome man we're about to i'm rubbing my palms together i'm like we're about to have a first marriage here and he started talking about that about proposing to her and uh he proposed to her right and now keep in mind this is maybe about about the two and a half year mark of me having synergy dating which was the first company technically it's still the same company but we're doing business as a dating dot but either way two and a half year mark of me opening my business and i'm about to get my first marriage you know i'm like oh cool i need to go to this wedding you know um i need to get a testimonial it's gonna it's gonna help my sales and all that stuff next thing you know Bum, bum, bum. Next thing you know, I get a call. He's sobbing, crying. And um, I was heartbroken with him. He would travel a lot for work. And uh, lo and behold, he 
came back home a day too early. And I'm sure you know what's gonna, what, what comes next. <sighs> didn't catch her in bed. Didn't totally catch her in the act. The other guy was gone, wherever he was at. But basically caught her with someone else's pants, another male's pants hanging off the side of the bed. Um, watches, you know, stuff that you kind of take off when you're going to go to sleep or you're doing other stuff. So it's very evident. You know, you can't make that up. You can't say, well, my son all of a sudden wanted to lay down with me. No, no, no. That didn't fly. And I say this selfishly. My dreams of having a first wedding and testimonial for Synergy Dating were crushed that day. And as for him, he was in worse shape. So yeah, that was a good story that turned bad. Um, but we've also had some other great stories. We, we had uh, a couple in Boston that wrote me an email and told me how if it wasn't for my events, they wouldn't have met. Now they're living together. Had other um, folks that did end up in relationships. You know, it's hard to get feedback. You got to put yourself in my shoes. It's super hard to get feedback when it comes to a dating company because people get shy and then they feel like, oh, crap. Now I'm accountable to this guy. And if it doesn't work out, then I have to somehow tell him. And I don't feel obligated to tell him, especially if I've already paid for the service or whatnot. Um, I actually know of other matchmakers that put some sort of clause. Like if you pay for matchmaking, and then they get married you gotta like pay the matchmaker extra which i think is asinine i love some of y'all matchmakers but some of y'all just y'all just trying to pull as much money as you can you know who you are but um yeah yeah so that's that's kind of a roll up of uh some of our success stories and then lastly on the date coaching side i have coached some clients that men and women that have no game and the next thing you know, they know how to communicate. They know how to turn up the volume on who they are as a person. The beautiful stuff, obviously. You know, I'm not, I'm not advocating for someone to turn up the volume on their crappy qualities. But no, authenticity, great communication, confidence skills. Uh, and we've had plenty of people that have come back and said, hey, I am a whole different person because of you. Again, very hard to measure. Something that I'm wanting to work on because you as a prospective client, you might be listening in and you want to know what I'm all about. And you might be ready to pull the trigger and be my next date coaching or matchmaking client. This is the reality. This is exactly um, what I'm telling you. I've had a lot of success stories. I can go into them a lot deeper. But yes, the reality of it is for the matchmaking side of it, I introduce the couples and then who knows what happens after that. Right, unless they sign up for date coaching, then I'm helping both of them. And as for date coaching, if people are all about keeping those habits permanent, then they're gonna have lifelong changes. If there's people that don't put in the work, nothing's gonna happen. So um, yeah, but um, I have a lot of good referrals, a lot of good references on the date coaching, the events and matchmaking side. I even have a lot of these screenshotted So if you want to see proof of that, so you know I'm not just fibbing and making all this up, let me know. 